Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for another Sabbath day. And Lord, we just come before you as a people. We are um, far from where you want us to be. Time is short. And you come when you have a people that reflect your character. Lord, there's much work to do in me and there may be in some others, Lord. And we just cry out to you for mercy and ask that you would recreate our heart and that we would forsake our sins and repent, come to the foot of the cross and warn others, Lord, of your soon coming to be ready. Forgive me of my sins in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, uh, after this short presentation, and I'm going to make it short, so that it has maximum impact on our thoughts. Sometimes long presentations detract away from the importance of what is trying to be said. Today, after this presentation, we're going to be uh, celebrating the Lord's Supper here uh, as, a, as part of the family of God. And, um, and in that Lord's Supper, uh, part of it will be eating of bread. And bread is very significant in the Bible. The first place in the Bible that I know of that bread is mentioned is all the way back in the fall of Adam and Eve. And remember in the story that Adam was told that he was going to have to uh, toil by the sweat of his brow and eat bread all the days of his life until he returned to the dust of the ground once he came. And so um, no longer would it be that he would just be able to go and pull the fruit right off the tree, but now he was going to have to labor for it. He was going to have to labor for that bread. And so um, I want you to think about that, because what in Scripture is the bread synonymous with? Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 3. The Bible says, And he humbled thee, this is speaking to the children of Israel. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger. Now, I don't know how many of you guys have ever fasted before. Have you guys ever fasted? Uh, the most I've ever fasted was seven days. And, um, and let me tell you something. At the end of seven days, you know, many of us would cringe from eating super plain food. Right? But if you have a piece of bread at the end of seven days, I swear it tastes better than cake. Doesn't it? It's just an explosion of flavor because, I mean, it is just so good. And so the Lord is saying he's allowing you to suffer to hunger, but notice what he goes on to say, and fed thee with manna, which thou knewest not, neither did thy fathers know, that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread only, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So why we need bread to maintain our physical bodies, we need the word of God even more. Isn't that true? And the Bible tells us, that Jesus was the Word made flesh. Amen? Remember the story here in Matthew chapter 4, verse 1. And remember Jesus, when he would uh, uh, defend himself against the temptation of Satan, would he use his own words? Well, he would use the words of Scripture. Amen? And so here he is in this story, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1. Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And how long was he up there? I went seven days. Forty days. Wow. He overcome not just food, but what else did he overcome? 
Well, he overcame Satan, but appetite. Matthew chapter 4 and verse 2, next verse. When he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward hungered. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones be made bread. Did Jesus have the power to do that? He absolutely did. But you know, he never used those powers to benefit himself, only others. And what did Jesus say? But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Now the message today, as we prepare our hearts and minds to partake in the bread that we're going to eat soon, is that we are to live by every word. In the story uh, that's in Samson, chapter 1, excuse me, Samuel, chapter 1, we see a really sad story. And a story that could befall any one of us. Let's pick it up in verse uh, 1 Sam, Samuel uh, 1, 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 1. Samuel also said unto Saul, The Lord sent me to anoint thee to be king over his people, over Israel. Now therefore hearken thou unto the voice of the words of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I remember that which Amalek did to Israel, how he laid wait for him in the way when he came up from Egypt. Now go and smite Amalek and utterly destroy all they have and spare them not, but slay both man and woman, infant and suckling, ox and sheep, camel and ass. And Saul gathered the people together and numbered them in Telem, 200,000 footmen and 10,000 men of Judah. And Saul came to the city of Amalek and laid wait in the valley. And Saul said unto the Kenites, Go, depart, get ye down from among the Amalekites, lest I destroy you with them, for ye showed kindness to all the children of Israel when they came up out of Egypt. So the Kenites departed from among the Amalekites. And Saul smote the Amalekites from Havilah until thou comest under shore. That is over against Egypt. And he took Agag, the king of the Amalekites, alive and utterly destroyed all the people with the edge of the sword. But Saul and the people spared Agag. So was it just Saul? It was Saul and the people. They spared Agag and the best of the sheep and of the oxen and of the fatlings and the lambs and all that was good and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refuse, they destroyed utterly. Then came the word of the Lord unto Samuel, saying, It repenteth me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he is turned back from following me, and hath not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried unto the Lord all night. And when Samuel rose early to meet Saul in the morning, it was told Samuel, saying, Saul came to Carmel, and behold, he set him up a place, and has gone about, and passed on, and gone down to Gilgal. And Samuel came to Saul, and Saul said unto him, Blessed be thou of the Lord. 
Saul really felt, it seems, that he's in good standing with the Lord. And notice he's invoking the name of the Lord here. And notice what he, gets, what he says now to Samuel. I have performed the commandments of the Lord. And Samuel said, What meaneth then this bleeding of the sheep in mine ears, and the lowing of the oxen which I hear? And Saul said, They have brought them from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep and of the oxen, to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, wast thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, Go and utterly destroy the sinners of the Amalekites and fight against them until they be consumed. Wherefore then didst thou not obey the voice of the Lord, but didst fly upon the spoil, and didst evil in the sight of the Lord? And Saul said unto Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord, and have gone the way which the Lord sent me, and have brought Agag the king of the Amalek, and have utterly destroyed the Amalekites. But the people took the spoils, sheep and oxen, the chief of the things which should have been utterly destroyed to sacrifice unto the Lord thy God in Gilgal. And Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness as is, is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the what? Word of the Lord. He hath also rejected thee from being king. How are we to live? By every word that proceedeth from the mouth of God. Did Saul seemingly achieve most of the mission? He really did. He uh, put together a vast army, laid battle plans, went against the enemy, pursued them, almost virtually utterly destroyed the entire nation except for one man. But he left that one man alone. One man. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandments of the Lord and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. Now therefore I pray thee, pardon my sin, and turn again with me, that I may worship the Lord. And Samuel said unto Saul, I will not return with thee, for thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, and the Lord hath rejected thee from being king over Israel. Wow. To whom much is given, much is required. Saul was made king in Israel. He served the Lord, but he did his own thing. He put himself above God in that he made a decision that went against the word of the Lord. And as Samuel turned about to go away, he laid hold upon the skirt of his mantle and rent it. And Samuel said unto him, the Lord hath rent the kingdom of Israel from thee this day and hath given it to a neighbor of thine that is better than thou. Friends, soon, the message that God has given this people 
is going to be given to the Gentiles. Because we have not obeyed the voice of the Lord. In everything that the Lord has said and told us to do. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, wasn't that what Saul was doing? Shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name have done many wonderful works? And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that worketh iniquity. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine where do we find these sayings? Right here, in the Word. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house upon the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. And it came to pass... When Jesus, had, when Jesus had ended these sayings, the people were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one having authority and not as the scribes. We're getting ready to enter into another part of our service. And part of that is going to require us to eat some bread. But unless you partake of this bread, and unless we, pro unless we apply it, and not just those parts like Saul that we agree with, but every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, we too, like Saul, will have the kingdom not of this world, but of heaven, rent from us. As we prepare to enter into this service, I pray that we would all enter into a prayerful thought and commitment that whatever the case, whatever it is that the Lord is asking us to do, and He does ask us to do things. His burdens are light, though, seemingly up front, it's uncomfortable. Uh, I don't like that. I don't see why we have to do that. But if we would, by faith, do what the Lord says to do, in the long run, His burden is lighter. Because we don't want to get down the road doing our own thing, thinking what is right in our own sight, only to realize that our, we're under a heavy burden and the kingdom in heaven will be rent away from us. Let's prepare our hearts and minds as we partake of this ordinance. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, forgive us, Lord, uh, for our failures as a people. Forgive us, Lord, for our personal failures. Uh, forgive the sins of our fathers and our forefathers. Lord, uh, turn us to your word with all of our hearts. Help us to be committed to your word, to obey all your word. Not to live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Help us to commit ourselves to being fortified with the word, so that like Jesus we'll be able to be 
um, using your word to defend against the darts and errors of the dark one. Lord, help us to be committed to doing every word so that we can enjoy the kingdom of heaven and dwell with you and each other eternally is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.